Welcome to the July 2017 Star Wars Canon Update. This month we got Forces of Destiny, a new novel, and seven new comic issues, so let's get going. The first eight Forces of Destiny episodes premiered on the Disney YouTube channel. I'm not going to review each one individually because, in my opinion, they aren't that significant as far as story goes. They revealed some new information here and there, like what a Night Watcher worm looks like or how Wampas were found near the Rebel base on Hoth, but they're pretty much skippable. I'm also not a fan of the animation style. It feels like a pretty big step down from the quality we normally expect from Lucasfilm. I tend to think the episodes surrounding characters from the Clone Wars or Rebels worked better than episodes surrounding, say, Jin, because the tones were more closely matched. But to me, the Jin episode felt way off, especially considering her state of mind at that point in her life as told by Rebel Rising. To summarize my thoughts on the first half of Forces of Destiny, it doesn't bother me that it exists, but I also don't think it's required viewing. Moving on to the new novel, Inferno Squad came out just last week, and I have much more positive things to say about it. Christy Golden is a superb writer, and she wrote a very compelling introduction for the characters we'll be playing in Battlefront 2's story mode. Coming from a Rebel fanboy, this new group of Imperials is likable, relatable, and just plain fun to read about. I also can't stop gushing about how effectively Golden includes other pieces of the Star Wars galaxy. Her connections are subtle and rewarding. On that note, if you read Rebel Rising already, you will be able to pick up on some fun details in Inferno Squad. You don't have to read it first, but I'm glad that I did. By the way, if you want to read Inferno Squad or Rebel Rising, you can get either of them for free on Audible by clicking on the link in the description or by visiting www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The Darth Maul miniseries concluded with its fifth and final issue this month. It finally showed us the details of Maul's very first fight with a Jedi. I still kind of think there are some inconsistencies between this comic and the new Darth Vader comic, but it's nothing that can't be hand-waved away. If you were waiting until the series was over to decide whether or not to pick this up, I say read it. Except for Lando, the Darth Maul comic is my favorite of the five-issue series. Darth Vader number three was surprising to me in a very good way. We knew his story was building to a fight with the Jedi Master. I was expecting things to go very simply and have Vader pretty handily win. Instead, he got his butt kicked, and that pleasantly surprised me. I think it makes much more sense that he would lose at this point in his life, I just wasn't expecting the comic to go that route. The new Jedi Master is a compelling character and a badass, and I look forward to seeing how the rest of the story pans out. Star Wars number 33 was interesting. It seems like it was a standalone story about Luke and Leia stranded on a seemingly deserted planet. It was mostly about Leia and where she's at mentally right now, and it was surprisingly moving. She notes being able to see Alderaan in certain parts of the galaxy because the light of the planet is still traveling through space. That's something I never considered, even though it makes perfect sense. Well, I don't know how much sense it makes that Leia can pick out a single planet no matter where she is in the galaxy, but thematically, I like what she said. In the next issue, it looks like we're getting a story with Lando, which is always welcome, but there's one thing about the Star Wars run that frustrates me right now. 3PO has been captured by the Empire for a long time. R2 immediately ran off to save him on his own, and everyone else has just been doing their own thing. I just want a little follow-up on that storyline, that's all. Dr. Aphra issues 9 and 10 began a new story arc after the disappointing Screaming Citadel crossover. The first two issues are promising, as Aphra attempts to sell the Ruhr crystal she obtained in the first arc. As expected, this does not go well. I like the whole Rur thing, and I hope he continues to reveal more ancient history, but after these next issues, I think I'd like to see Aphra start a new adventure and go back to some Indiana Jones-style treasure hunting. Poe Dameron number 17 was kind of a mixed bag. I feel like the Poe Dameron series as a whole is very up and down. Some arcs are great, and some are lackluster. The setup for this next storyline is a little baffling. The Resistance needs to prove to the galaxy that the First Order is a threat, so they're going to record some war crimes. That makes sense, but someone suggests the idea like it's brilliant thinking. Why haven't they attempted this before? It seems like the very first logical thing to do if the Senate doesn't believe you. Oh well, I'm willing to reserve judgment until the arc is over. Rogue One Issue 4 continues to show us some scenes that weren't in the film. 
One is between Bodhi and K2, as they bond over both being quote-unquote reprogrammed Imperials. There's a nice scene between Mon Mothma and Jin, but the one I liked the most highlighted some of the terrible things Rebel operatives did that they wanted to atone for. I don't think the film did a great job at communicating what Cassian and the other members of the Rogue One team did, and exactly why they wanted to join Jin on a possible suicide mission for redemption, so I was glad to see that. Also released this month was the third part of the comic adaptation of Weapon of a Jedi. As for story of the month in July, I'm gonna go with Inferno Squad. If you only read one new story from July, I'd make it Christy Golden's new novel. But that's it for July. The canon update will return on September 1st, and we'll cover the nine new comic issues we'll be getting, including the start of the Mace Windu comic and the Cassian and K2 comic. Until then, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.